And that's the heart of God. What man among you, when his son says, Daddy, give me a loaf. Give me a loaf of bread. I'm hungry. No loving father is going to give that boy a stone. God is not that way. He's not looking to discourage us or to punish us. But there are conditions on getting your prayers answered. It's not just asking any way you want to. It's living your life with the right motivation and in obedience to His Word. Amen. And you know what? That comes through stumbling and fumbling. How many of you stumble around a lot of times? Amen. Even when we sin, even when we stumble, even through our flaws and our shortcomings, we still can be in obedience to God's Word. We fall short. But your desire, your desire is to please God and do what's pleasing in His sight, to read His Word and obey Him. Do you think that pleases God? It does. So a man's not going to give his boy a stone when he asks for a loaf of bread. And he goes, or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? This is severe because snakes were despicable in Hebrew culture. Couldn't get near them, certainly couldn't eat them. They were despicable, snakes were. And this is a serious passage in verse 10. Or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? The answer, rhetorically, is absolutely not. Absolutely not. But ask for the right motive. Are you in the will of God? You must be submissive to God's will. So if you're not submissive to God's will, if you're not coming to God with the right motivation, if you're not living in obedience, don't ask. Amen. Mm. We don't like conditions, do we? Again, this is not a blank check. Well, I just love living any way I want to, contrary to the Word of God, and I'm just going to ask God anyway. God has a heart of mercy and grace, and He wants you to do what's pleasing in His sight. And He's able and willing to give you everything you need. And most of us listening to this message have clothes on their back, food in their stomach, maybe too much. <laughs> we have all those things. People that love us, pray for us. And then He says in verse 11, If you then, being evil, that means you, being a sinner, we're all sinners, even the people that have sinned against God, and that includes all of us, know how to give good gifts to your children, okay? How much more will your Father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask Him? It's going to be beyond what you can comprehend. It may be a spiritual blessing that you need that you're not praying for. What happened to spiritual blessings? Things you can't see in my life. Until you experience what God is doing in my life and I can experience what God is doing in your life and I can see the glory of Christ in you. That's the biggest blessing of all for you to help someone know the Lord better. I mean, our, shouldn't our prayers be this, y'all? Lord, I want to help someone know the Lord better today. And I want to... I want them to help me know the Lord better. Because I'm stumbling around in, the, in, in this world. But stumble around in the Word of God. Work out your own salvation through fear and trembling. Ask. Seek. Knock. That's a progression. You see how it's more progression? Ask is, and then your seeking is a little more intense. And then finally you go, God, hear my heart. Yes. But are you obedient? Are you doing what I said do in, in the Word? Do you desire to do it? <coughs> He's willing. But are you willing Amen. to do what's necessary to be blessed by God through obedience? Amen. And if you're not in, in a submissive way in your life, don't ask. Let not that man expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being double-minded and unstable in all his ways. Amen. In the name. In the name. Let not that man expect that he will receive anything from the Lord. Amen. Why? Because he's double-minded and he's unstable. God is not asking.
asking for perfection from you. That was done at the cross. Perfection was done in the life of Christ. And when you repent and put your faith in Him, God looks at you justified and righteous. But don't be double-minded. You know, you pick up this book and you pick up that book and you read from here and you read over here. But you know you what? You forget to read God's Word. And that's the way you become double-minded and unstable. You think God's pleased with that? No. I took a... A couple of years ago, I took a, a fast from books. I mean, I got a bunch of them. In my library. I mean, I got a bunch of books. And well... Respected authors, too. Books, man, I love it. Used to read, read, read. Still do. But I took a fast from not reading them. Amen. Guess what? Reading the Bible only will change your life. It will change you. It will conform you. And many times it will convict you. But it will help you be more like the Lord. Is that what you want to do? Do you want to be more like Christ and less like yourself? The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. And the heart of God is being shown in this passage. He wants to give what's good to His children. But He's asking something from us. Don't be double-minded and unstable. With every wind of doctrine, looking for the next biggest thing. <coughs> Looking for a special revelation from God. I meet people like that all the time. They walk around with their Bible in their hand, but they're looking for a special revelation. Special. Wait a minute. There's no spe special revelation from God. It's right here in your hand. Read it. The canon is close. Read the Bible. Do what it says. There's plenty of revelation you haven't even read yet that God wants to show you about Himself. So be submissive to His will. Your motivation must be right and you must be living in obedience. And that doesn't mean perfection because if it did, we'd all be in trouble. We all stumble and we all fall and we all have flaws and shortcomings. But the Lord wants us to strive and work it out. Turn to your neighbor and say, you got to work it out. you got to work it out. you got to work it out. You know, the Bible says you got to work out your own salvation through fear and trembling, not mine. i got a full-time job working my own out. You can't work for it, but Christians need to, to build on their faith. And we have plenty to do. We have plenty to do. And so if you're in His will... 1 John 5, 14 says, This is the confidence that we have before Him that if we ask according to His will, He hears us. Now, you'll see people on TV saying, if you, if you say, God has your will in my life that you're weak, that you lack faith, that your faith is weak. Just ask whatever you want. Ask it. Ask for prosperity in the mansion and the cars and all the clothes and all the rings and all the bling. All right. <laughs> Just bypass this verse of Scripture. They don't preach this verse of Scripture. This is the confidence that you can have as a child of God, living in obedience to God, living in His will, and living with the right motivation. You can have confidence before Him at the throne of grace. That if we ask according to His will, Amen. He hears us. Turn to your neighbor and say, ask according to His will. Ask according to His will. And ask Him to help you with that. Yeah, I can do that. Just ask.